Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm the Scottish Nerd that brings you Pokemon TCG content as well as gaming and entertainment related videos. If any of that interests you, be sure to subscribe down below as I do upload multiple times a week. And in today's video, we're going back to the expanded format to look at the other great Ultra and Across Mad deck that we have available to us. And that is the GX paired up with Malamar, of course, one of my favourite decks. Timestamps are in the description as always if you want to jump around to any of the matches. Taking a look at the Ultra and Across my GX here, it has 190 hit points, so it does keep you out of range of certain attacks anyway that are dealing 180 damage. And that certainly can be useful so that you can survive those hits. But its main attack here is the Photon Geyser. For a Metal and a Psychic attack cost, you do 20 damage, but you also discard all Psychic energy from this Pokemon and you do an additional 80 damage for each of those Psychic energy. So if we have 2 Psychic energy on our Ultra Necrozma, as well as the Metal energy of course, then when we use Photon Geyser we're going to be hitting for a big 180 damage as we're doing. 160 for the Psychics as well as that extra 20 damage. This is great as it's uncapped damage and you're able to hit into big tag team and VMAX Pokemon, getting really crucial knockouts, taking 3 prize cards while only giving up 2 prize cards yourself. And it can have a useful GX attack here as well in Sky Scorching Light. It allows you to deal 60 damage to all of your opponents benched Pokemon, assuming that there are uh, 6 or fewer prize cards between both players. So we have a bunch of supporting Pokemon to help out the Ultra Necrozma here. Just like my previous Malamar deck list, we have gone for straight consistency and we have the Malamar full 4-4 line of it here with the Psychic Recharge ability, allowing us to attach a Psychic Energy from our discard pile to one of our benched Pokemon. This is how we're going to get our Ultra Necrozma charged up multiple times throughout the game and be able to hit massive numbers, upwards of 300 damage if we're really to against any VMAX Pokemon. But we also have a copy of Ditto here, just to give us an extra copy of Inky essentially. We also have two copies of the Duskwings Necrozma here. It has the Invasion ability, which allows you to put this Pokemon into the active spot. And so with a Floatstone attached to it, it gives us excellent mobility, allowing us to put our Ultra Necrozma onto the bench and combo it with that Psychic Recharge ability on Melamore. We do also have a couple of copies of Jirachi, just for that search ability, getting the trainer cards that we need rather than playing Trainer's Mail, as we can use Jirachi every single turn that we have it available to us. And we also have a copy of Giratina in here. This is just for the matchups such as Decidueye or Altaria, anything that would block a GX from being able to attack. We can go in with Giratina and hit those, as well as using that Distortion Door ability, allowing us to recycle it after it gets knocked out also helps to put those extra damage counters on, so if you're just short of a knockout, you can use Distortion Door to rack up that extra damage and get a knockout when the damaged Pokemon moves to the bench. And finishing up for the Pokemon here, we have a copy of Mew with Bench Barrier. I've opted for this copy of a kind of bench protection Pokemon. There are other options such as Mr. Mime. But I went with this one as it does allow you to place 3 damage counters anywhere you like on your opponent's Pokemon. So again, if you're just short of a knockout, you can use this to finish off a damaged Pokemon. The rest of the deck is pretty much all consistency. We have 4 Quick Ball, 4 Mysterious Treasure. We have that copy of Ordinary Rod, as well as the Acro Bikes to draw through our deck. You'll notice that we don't have anything like Thirsty Seeker, and that is because we just want to go through our deck as quickly as possible and I've built it very much like a standard deck where we have four copies of Professor's Research, we have Marnie, we've got Colrus and Boss's Orders. Opting for more Colrus over the Marnie 
because we typically want to have a large hand size and Marnie is not going to be able to provide us with that. And we also have a split of a skateboard as well as floatstone. Floatstones for the dusk wings in the Krosma, but we also have the skateboard just in case we want to use it on the Jirachi and we don't have access to floatstone or dusk wings. So for the energy as well, we do have a split, of course, we need that metal energy for Ultra Necrozma. We have two of those as well as a bunch of psychics, and we can also include the beast energy here, as it does increase our Ultra Beast's attacks by 30, and it does count as any energy, just like a rainbow energy. So you can use this as a metal energy on the Ultra Necrozma and get some additional damage going as well. And of course you can even use it on the Duskwings Necrozma as well. Let's get into some battles, be sure to give this video a like if you enjoy it down below. And let's try and get some wins and deal some big damage with this deck. We're starting off this game with a double GX start off. Got Ultra Necrozma in the active spot, going second but looks like my opponent just has to pass it over to us. They have a very uneventful turn. And we do at least have a quick ball that we can make use of and discard one of these energies. And we'll definitely grab ourselves another Inke here. And let's have a look at the deck. We have a pretty much all of our Pokemon available to us. We have one Malamar prize. And let's take a look at our energy situation. We do have a metal energy in our hand. So everything else is looking pretty good. We do have a Colrus, which you don't really want to make use of, but I think just refreshing this hand could be useful. And the other option is, of course, we could just hold off until the following turn so that we guarantee this Malamar. I do like that idea, so I think I'm just going to also pass over to my opponent. We can always attach a Psychic Energy to the active or use Invasion as well if we want to. My opponent goes with the coach trainer which draws them four cards since they do have a tag team Pokemon in the active spot and we are weak to fairy with our Ultra Necrozma so this uh, tag team is going to be able to one hit us if they get the energy on dealing 300 damage since we are weak and we get the mysterious treasure pick up which is great we can get down another Inke and that'll increase our bench for using Colrus as well. There's our third Inke. We can attach the Psychic to the active and use Colrus. We're looking for a Floatstone here, which we do get, as well as a Malamar. And we can even discard some more Psychic energy if we want to. So we'll attach the Floatstone and use Invasion, and then go with the double Psychic Recharge. Putting them both onto Necrozma GX here, or Ultra Necrozma GX I should say. And we can even use a Quick Ball here and get ourselves another Pokemon. Not sure which one we want to go for, we could get a second Ultra Necrozma, or alternatively we could get something like a Giratina, could also be useful. My opponent is only playing Sylveon and Gardevoir for all of their Pokemon. So certainly hitting into it with a Giratina could be good, but also the potential of Ultra Necrozma is too good to you know turn down. So let's get a second Ultra Necrozma so that we can get that on the go for when this one gets knocked out. And we'll use a Photon Geyser for the knockout, dealing that perfect 260 damage for the knockout here and taking three prize cards on the second turn of our game as well I should say. And getting down that double Malamar setup was fantastic. My opponent does promote the Sylveon and Gardevoir, of course. And they have the energy for it. But we can just get our second Ultra Necrozma up and running here. Now, they do have a Fairy Charm ability. So that would prevent us from using our Donwins Necrozma. But we're not looking to use that. We're looking to get a one-hit knockout with our Ultra Necrozma. So we will promote our Dunwings. We're looking for a Metal Energy here. So we'll definitely want to thin as much as possible using Acrobike. 
we can grab the escape board and we'll attach all of these tools I think. Put a floatstone on Malamar, we can put the escape board on Ultra and Plasma, why not? And we do need to be attaching the beast or metal energy, so unfortunately I can't attach the psychic. We'll have to use Marnie and we'll hope that we're able to draw into the metal or beast. We don't, which is a bit unfortunate. We will just have to hold off and attach some of the energies manually through Psychic Recharge, but my opponent does concede anyway. They were too far behind with a return to knockout, taking three prize cards. So very nice matchup, we'll get into another match here. Now we do have our preferred starter this time around in Jirachi, and it looks like we're up against some sort of Eternatus VMAX variant. So we'll definitely be wanting to get our Ultra Necrozma going so that we can get a one-hit knockout on the VMAX. And we can start off with the computer search here, discarding two Psychic Energy. Perhaps should have uh, kept one of those and attached them, but it's fine. We'll cope. I think we'll grab our Inke, get our Inkes developed as quickly as possible here. And use an Acrobite, see what we can get into. And another Inke. Excellent. Definitely want to be playing those down and making use of Stellar Wish. I think we'll take out the Marnie and we are most likely just going to go with the Professor's Research on our following turn. Looking for those Malamars as well as ways to discard energy and the uh, metal energy for Ultra Necrozma, of course. We'll be on my opponent to develop their board as well. As they do have a similar strategy, they do have a lot of bench Pokemon that they'll have to put into play. And of course they shouldn't be doing a crazy attack this turn, considering they typically just want to go into the VMAX and start hitting with that. But you never know, they could be playing something like a Hoopa, or even Spiritums, or some other dark Pokemon. They did get the VMAX with an Ultra Ball. So they're looking to just develop their board a bit more to use the Capture Energy to get the Dark Right EX. That Dark Cloak ability allowing their Dark Pokemon to have a free retreat if they have Dark Energy on them. They also have the Dark Ride GX there, which gets itself out of the discard pile, much like Aru Garatina. But instead of dealing damage, that Dark Ride GX allows it to put a Dark Energy onto itself from the discard. The opponent plays down the Crobat V, drawing themselves some cards, just building up their hand. And they could always go for the first attack on Eternatus here at Power Accelerator, but it looks like they don't have an energy available to do that. So it's over to us and we can play down our Mysterious Treasure here, discarding a Professor's Research. And we can get a Malamar, just so that we have that in play, and we have at least one available. Of course, we don't want to use Ordinary Rod, as we'll definitely want to keep those Psychic Energy in there. But we could get back the Mew, so definitely go for that, just in case my opponent started sniping us with that Dark Right EX, or any other Dark Pokemon that are able to snipe. We'll use our Professor's Research, see what we can draw into. We get the Quick Ball, so we definitely want to be using that to get ourselves Ultra Necrozma and start building up a big Photon Geyser for a knockout. We have our Metal Energy plus Psychic Recharge and we can always grab ourselves another Malamar here. Getting a second Psychic Recharge off would be pretty optimal, so we'll play down this Ditto to get a third Malamar developed pretty shortly. And of course, Mysterious Treasure for that second Malamar. There he is. The squids are coming in. And we're going to Psychic Recharge, get that other energy. As well, of course, you don't want to forget to Stellar Wish, grabbing the extra trainer cards. And we can get the escape board, although my opponent's likely going to get a knockout on a Jirachi, so that's going to be pretty pointless. I think we'll just stick with the Viridian Forest here, not quite putting it into play, as we're not going to be able to make use of the energy, we'll just hold it in the hand for the following turn. And if my opponent does get the knockout here, we can always promote a Melamar, 
just so that we can build up some extra energy on our Ultra Necrozma and we can get into some extra cards with our Professor Research of course. There is the Eternatus VMAX, it does has have a whopping 340 hit points so we're going to need a lot of energy to be able to get a one hit knockout on it but that is Ultra Necrozma GX's speciality so it shouldn't be a problem for it. I think we're going to need a total of what is that like five energy I believe something around there basically just like piling on a bunch of energy until we're knocking out everything that's always a fun part of the deck is just piling up damage and energy and seeing how much damage you can do. So we do get a metal energy which I don't really want to be putting into play so I think we're just going to be getting rid of it and we can make use of Viridian Forest by getting rid of said metal energy. We'll grab that psychic energy of the deck and use Professor's Research so that we have an extra target for the Psychic Recharge. Now we did miss out on a Floatstone, which would have been good here, as we do have a way of getting the Dawnwings Necrozma, but we at least get our third Malamar into play. We can also make use of the Mysterious Treasure and Acrobat. I think I'll Acrobat first, just to see what we get into a another Mysterious Treasure. We definitely want to grab our Necrozma here, the Dawn Wings. Get that out of the deck, and we can put a skateboard on it as well as a single energy, and that will give us the movement that we need. As well as putting a energy onto the Ultra Necrozma, of course, and building that up as much as possible. Just crossing our fingers that my opponent doesn't have the Lysander or Bosses orders or any cards similar to that. And we will just pass it over to our opponent. We have three psychic energy on the Ultra Necrozma. So at the moment it's doing 80 for each of those psychic energy for a total of 240 damage plus the 20 base as well is 260. So we do need another psychic energy in order to get a knockout here. Another Psychic Energy will do it, so if my opponent knocks out the Malamar here, that's going to be fine as I do have an Inke, and perhaps I should have retreated into the Inke and sacrificed that instead, but it's fine, we can put down the Inke and get ourselves a 4th Malamar out of the deck at some point for sure. We have Viridian Forest in play, so it's going to be easy to get that Psychic Energy out of the deck and get a big knockout here. My opponent just mulling over their hand, seeing what cards they have available to them. Looks like they're playing a Zoroark build, as they have Zerua here on the bench. And that is a good show, as they do have some good attacks on the Zoroark, as well as that excellent trade ability, allowing you to draw cards. So they're not going to be doing a whole lot other than benching that Zerua, just taking a knockout on our Malamar. And as I said, we can promote our Ultra Necrozma here, and use Viridian Forest to get our psychic energy, even drawing into a psychic energy, so we can use the infrared forest to discard that. We'll put down a, another Ultra Necrozma, as it's definitely going to be useful, as well as our NK here. Using Colrus, we're going to be drawing a ridiculous amount of cards, and we can start using Psychic Recharge, building up our next Ultra Necrozma. Also making use of Quick Ball so we have extra targets for a Recycled Recharge as well. I think we'll grab a Giratina here. That seems pretty good. We can always discard that pretty easily. And of course we will Recycled Recharge, get another energy on Ultra Necrozma and hit into our opponent with Photon Geyser. Getting the perfect knockout, 340 damage for the four psychic energy that we have to discard. But it does limit their bench and they're going to be on the back foot here since we take three prize cards. Even if my opponent is able to take two prize cards on our Ultra Necrozma, even if they put down another VMAX, we will be able to easily get the knockout on that VMAX with our second Ultra Necrozma. They're going to be promoting the Dark Ride GX here. Perhaps they have the means of uh, poisoning us or 
doing some sort of special condition as the GX attack does instantly knock us out if we're affected by a special condition. So typically these Dark Rye GX decks do run something like that. My opponent's going to be discarding a bunch of cards here. They have the Dark Energies in the discard pile, so they're going to want to use the Dark Patches pretty soon. To get into a Zorog GX, that's going to be great for drawing those cards, using trade to discard a card and then draw two cards. Going to be building up their hand quite nicely. And just looking for that energy. We do have Viridian Forest in play still, so they can always use that to find energy. And they are opting to put down another Eternatus, so yep, they are getting the Eternatus VMAX off of the Rescue Stretcher as well. Very interesting and bold move from my opponent considering we can easily get a knockout on that VMAX and we're definitely going to be ahead in the prize race throughout this match if they go down that route. So they use Viridian Forest, discarding a Versus Seeker to grab that Dark Energy and they could just hit us for 130 I believe but they do have the Hypnotoxic Laser poisoning us and putting us to sleep. But they just need the one special condition so the poison will do it and the GX attack gets an instant knockout on the Darkrai. And my opponent does go down to two prize cards remaining since they did take those early knockouts. And we do have the boss's orders but considering my opponent doesn't have two energy on the Eternatus it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And we can always use a GX attack of our own. My opponent has 180 hit points, but they are resistant to Psychic, so just trying to decide here, I think we should put up our Ultra Necrozma, so that we can put energy on our Dawn Wings. That's going to be our best bet here, I think. We have the Beast Energy as well, so that could actually work as we can GX attack with our Dawn Wings Necrozma, so let's go down that route, we will Psychic Recharge onto our Dawn Wings get those energy into play out of the discard pile. I did over attach here as I did mean to put the beast energy on but it's fine I mean we're going to be using it to retreat anyway so it's no big deal. We use invasion and put ultra necrozma onto the bench and let's see what else we can do. We don't have any tool cards on my opponent's side. Uh, we can use viridian forest of course to discard garatina this turn. And we don't have any energy left in the deck, we've thinned that out quite nicely. And we should be able to just go for an attack here. Want to hold this hand as we have boss's orders. So yeah, we'll GX attack. Since we're behind on prize cards, we're able to deal 180 damage. And we are invincible on this following turn. Donald Wings cannot be knocked out. So that's a great attack, as you can see. Really, if you're behind on prizes, that is the optimal attack that you should be using, especially in this situation where we're getting a one-hit knockout with that beast energy. And now my opponent is going to have to get a way of knocking us out, because if not, then we are primed to win this matchup for sure. You're going to have to find something like a energy as well as a dark patch, and that would do it for them, as well as a switch as well, though, I suppose. They are pretty close. They have a 5 card hand, they're going to ultra ball though, that's going to reduce their hand quite severely, not unless they have the support card already. Discarding more energy though, they have binned a lot of energy already. They're grabbing themselves the Crowbat so that will refresh their hand a little. Let's have a look at the discard pile from my opponent. They have 7 dark energy in the discard pile already, as well as that capture energy that was on the Eternatus VMAX earlier. They're going to go with the Battle Compressor, discard even more cards out of their deck. You've got to wonder if they're going to be able to draw into the cards that they need here. But they are able to draw 5 cards and they still have trade available to them. Like I said, they need the Dark Energy as well as the Dark Patch and the Switching card. They hit us with the Parallel City, so we're going to have to discard one of our Pokemon. We can get rid of an Inky here I think. 2 Melamar is going to be enough to finish out this game, especially with how our Ultra Necrozma is going. And let's have a look at our own discard pile. We do have both for Metal Energy in the discard pile however, so we won't be able to get a knockout with Ultra Necrozma since he doesn't have any Metal Energy left and we have our Beast Energy 
on our Dawn Wings Necrozma. So we will have to use boss's orders I think to try and bring something up and hit into it for 150 damage using Dark Flash. My opponent is bringing a whole bunch of Dark Ride GX into play here and there's not really a huge amount that we can do about this unfortunately. My opponent does have the energy on the Zoroark. They're going to use Trade, discarding a card and drawing two. And it looks like they're just going to be looking to get an attack off with the Zoroark for sure. Let's have a look at how many boss we have. We've not got any boss in the discard pile yet. So we certainly could use a boss's orders here to hit into something. And then on the following turn, if they have a switch, we could use another boss's orders to try and bring it back up. This is definitely going to be a tricky matchup considering we've had to use up our metal energy. Didn't even realise that we had both of them used up, I thought we still had one available. So they do have the double dart patch now after that huge colorus from my opponent. And they have a 2 retreat cost on Zorark here. So they won't be able to retreat and they do still need a switch. But they have a Versi Seeker for a Lysander. They definitely could make use of that in these following turns. And I guess they're just going to be wanting to retreat on the following turn and go into the VMAX. I think we are just going to have to boss's orders and dog flash something. Uh, of course, my opponent only needs the one energy with the Dark Cloak on Dark Right EX here, allowing your Pokemon to have free retreat. So that one energy does give them free retreat, and they will be able to get a knockout on our Dawn Wings Necrozma here. We are weak to Dark as well, so they do have the knockout, and it's going to be game from my opponent, unfortunately. That is a shame, but um, for some reason my opponent has opted to pass. Um, do they not realise that they have the knockout? Like... They were doing enough damage and were weak to dark, but th instead they've opted to pass. So this gives us an opportunity to use boss's orders still. And we can bring up something like the Crobat. Uh, let's see, Dark right here is also got a resistance to Psychic. So I think just boss's orders on the Crobat, any of the Crobats. And let's see, we can Fuel Blower. Get rid of that parallel city so that we can have a bit more of an open bench and we'll put down another inky let's see we'll get Gertina out as well we might as well we can deal damage to two pokemon let's put it on the eternatus and we'll put it on oh i don't know Zoroark. why not now here, I think we're going to have to go with a Garatina attack, since that will put my opponent down to one prize card if they opt not to knock out the Garatina. They're going with well played, I think they think that I have a metal energy, which I don't, and Dawn Wings Necrozma isn't doing enough damage. So I'm attaching my energies with Psychic Recharge, and I'm going to retreat here discard one of our psychics which is fine and we'll have to use our Giratina to deal 130 damage and we'll just put 40 onto itself since it'll likely get knocked out anyway if my opponent does have the knockout. Really not sure why they opted to just pass when they did all of the work and they drew into everything perfectly in order to win the game. They even have Versi Seeker and Lysander in their hand right now, so they still have the ability to win the game. So let's see if they choose to do so this time. They attach the energy to the Crobat, so it does have free retreat now. I guess they're choosing what to retreat into, which if it's not the VMAX then I'm going to be concerned. There is the Lysander from our opponent, bringing up Ultra Necrozma. And they're going to be able to retreat into that Eternity's VMAX and finally get the knockout. 
Well, it at least shows off the deck as we were able to get a big one hit knockout on the first VMAX that my opponent pulled up, as well as bringing out that GX attack on the Dawnwings Necrozma. We're starting our final match here pretty strong with the Stellar Wish Jirachi in the active spot, and we are up against some sort of Zacian deck, whether it be the Turbo build or perhaps it will be the ADP build. Either way is going to be pretty difficult to deal with here. But we have a bunch of mysterious treasures that we can make use of, so that will definitely help get our NKs developed. Get all of these squids onto the board, and we'll put down our mysterious treasures. Having to discard one is fine. We will most likely also call this here. I do want to just refresh my hand, despite not being the best, since it is only three cards. But we do get a computer search. And we definitely want to make use of that in the following turn when we can computer search for a supporter card. We do get a quick ball here, so I will make use of that. And we can get rid of the Garatina. So perhaps the computer search isn't the best here, but we can get the next Inkay down. And just seeing how many Melamar we have, we have all of them, so that's good. And for the rest of the deck, it all seems pretty much intact which is excellent. We can put down the Inke and we will use Distortion Door on Giratina, putting damage on the Zacian as well as getting an attachment on the Giratina, just so that we have an attacker at least in the works that we can make use of pretty soon, as we will want to start attacking and trying to keep up with our opponent. Not making use of Computer Search of course is not the best, but I'm sure we will be able to make use of it at some point. My opponent is just drawing a whole bunch of cards. They have How, which you, you never see like in Expanded or Standard. No one ever plays it, but they did also Intrepid Sword and they put down the Power Plant here, which is going to be a bit annoying with our Dawnwings and the Crossman not being able to use Invasion. But we can still make use of Stellar Wish, so that's what we will do. We have the Professor's Research that we can make use of. Will be a bit unfortunate losing out on the computer search, but we will want to be drawing a lot of cards here, so we might as well make use of the professor's research. And we will go for that, see what cards we can draw into here. Hopefully, some Malamars. We do get one, and we also get that Ultra Necrozma we can attach an energy to. And we do get the skateboard as well, although we are lacking a another energy for this Giratina. So we'll just attach the one energy and I think I'll just pass it over to my opponent. We're not at any kind of a risk for getting knocked out since the defending Pokemon only has a single energy and they do need three energy in order to attack us. So we see a Nest Ball from my opponent and they have the Galarian Stunfisk which is a very annoying attacker to deal with. It has more HP for the more metal energy it has on it as well as dealing 60 damage and then if we attack into it we take 120 damage. Very annoying Pokemon and looks like a primary attacker from my opponent using boss's orders or Guzma in this case to get a knockout on our Inke and we lose an Inke to work with. Luckily though we do get to keep our Jirachi around so we can keep making use of that which is great. Definitely putting an escape board onto there. And I think using Professor's Research once again, although considering my opponent's hand size, I think Marnie is going to be a good option. So let's go with a Marnie this time around, putting my opponent down to just a four card hand, significantly less than what they have right now. And we don't draw into a huge amount of good cards to work with, unfortunately. We do have an Aqua Bike, hopefully, we get an energy we do, and another Aqua Bike we can. Continue to thin the deck a little bit. We do get an Aqua Bike or Mysterious Treasure. I think Mysterious Treasure looks pretty appealing. Uh, let's see if we can get a knockout here. We have Beast Energy, or we could just attack with Giratina. And we wouldn't actually get knocked out if we attack with the Giratina, although my opponent does have the Goggles. I think going in with the Giratina, considering we don't have enough energy for the Ultra Necrozma knockout. So we will just take the Mysterious Treasure so that we can go and get ourselves another Malamar. 
that seems like a reasonable option. Let's go with that. We'll take the Mysterious Treasure and we'll also use Fuel Floor, discarding the Power Plant as well as the Metal Goggles so that it's easier for us to attack into the Stunfisk here. And of course we have the Floatstone, we can stick on the Dunwings Necrozma and we will make use of Psychic Recharge, putting that extra energy onto the Giratina so we can start hitting into it. And we'll just retreat here. Of course, Stellar Wish, don't want to forget that. Grab ourselves a Professor's Research, seems pretty good. We'll take that. And we can retreat, going into this Giratina and hitting into our opponent for 130 damage. And just let's see, we'll put the 40 on the Jirachi. And that at least protects our Giratina. Only taking 120 damage, so we do survive the hit, and my opponent will be forced to hit into a Rigurisina to get the knockout with Stunfisk here. They have a Cynthia, which is going to allow them to refresh their hand after that Marnie. They also have a Fuel Blower, that is unfortunately getting rid of our Floatstone and Escape Board. But we're in a good spot either way, as we do have the Jirachi we can go into the active with, or alternatively we can attack with either our Dawn Wings or Ultra Necrozma. My opponent gets some more of their bench developed a little bit and they just go for the attack dealing that 60 damage for the knockout and I think I will just go with the Jirachi into the active spot here. We can certainly attach this beast energy to one of our Ultra Beasts. Let's see what Pokemon and energy we have in the discard. We can shuffle in that NK with our Ordinary Rod for sure. And I think putting our Beast Energy onto the Dawn Wings, perhaps. Dark Flash would be doing 150 and we do get to ignore Resistance, which is good. Although getting that extra little bit of damage on the Ultra Necrozma is also just as valuable. So I think we will put it onto the Dawn Wings Necrozma this time around and we'll use the mysterious treasure here, get rid of our other Necrozma so that we can grab a Malamar and we will shuffle in some Pokemon, mainly the Inke. I suppose we could always put the Necrozma back into the deck just in case we need a second copy of that and we'll go with the Professor's Research. Just looking for a switching card like a Floatstone, we unfortunately don't find one just yet but we do have some things that we can work with here, we'll put the Viridian Forest into play, use that to discard our other Viridian Forest, so we can grab an energy, get that Scythe energy, and discard it with the Quick Ball, and we can get the Inky into play, so that we can work towards that third Malamar that's in our hand right now. Now, we can just go with an attack on either of our Necrozmas here, think using the Dark Flash could be good, or we could always GX attack and prevent our opponent from attacking us. That does seem pretty appealing here, so let's go with that. We'll Psychic Recharge, get both of these on, slap those Psychic Energy onto the Dawnwings Necrozma, as well of course using Stellar Wish. We do get into an escape board as well, which is great. We won't attach it just yet in case my opponent has another copy of Fuel Blower. But we will make use of a GX attack here. Getting a knockout, we will be taking that 120 damage still, which is a bit unfortunate. But at least with a GX attack, we will once again be invincible on this following turn for my opponent. They won't be able to get a knockout with the recession that they're building up there. And it means that we can retreat our our following turn and go into our Ultra Necrozma, get a knockout that way. We have a look at our discard pile, we have two Psychic Energy in there right now. If Viridian stays then we can have access to a third one as well. Uh, my opponent is promoting the Kangaskhan here. It has a Rally back which allows it to deal more damage if one of their Pokemon was knocked out. And uh, we are getting hit with a Marnie unfortunately. So our Malamar is going to go back into the deck. Shouldn't be too much of a problem since we do have two of them developed already. 
and we'll have to see what my opponent comes up with it. now. Perhaps just to pass over to us, they do have a energy attachment on that station, as well as a metal core barrier. They do have the retreat, they're going to use Palpad. I didn't even notice this Kangaskhan has two retreat cost, but they just switched it out somehow. I mean, I, I missed that one. I don't know what happened there. Uh, yeah, that was weird. They just somehow retreated. Ah, uh, of course, Sylvalia Sil here. It's, uh, I was thinking it was the other Sylvalia that draws cards, but this Sylvalia gives your Pokemon that are basic free retreat, of course. So it could retreat. Zacian is not able to knock us out. And now we can get our energy onto Ultra Necrozma and get a knockout on this Zacian. So obviously attaching a Psychic Energy, and uh, we'll want to be using Psychic Recharge here. Getting those energy onto the Ultra Necrozma. Uh, we do only have 3 Psychic Energy, dealing a total of 260 damage. And with that Metal Core Barrier, it's being reduced by 70. So we would only be doing 190, which is not quite enough for a knockout, unfortunately. Uh, we don't really want to be giving up our Ultra Necrozma either, so I think hitting into the Zacian here with our Dawn Wings is going to be most optimal. Of course, our other option is to go into our Jirachi, and that would allow us to just spend a turn to get some extra hand developed. And I would much rather get a one hit knockout with our Ultra Necrozma here. So I'm going to discard two of these Psychic Energy. Retreat into our Jirachi and use Stellar Wish. Uh, our hand isn't looking too hot, so I'm going to grab the Chorus as well so we can refresh that and see a whole bunch of different cards. Hopefully, get into that Malamar again, and uh, that would be excellent if we could, but unfortunately, we just find Quick Balls instead of Mysterious Treasures or even the Malamar itself. Really needed the Malamar there. We even got the Float Stone which would have given us a knockout with the Ultra Necrozma although we have already retreated I suppose can't retreat more than once in a turn we'll just have to pass it over to our opponent and they will likely just have to hit into our Jirachi which is exactly what we want as we can then go in with our Ultra Necrozma and get that one hit knockout instead my opponent is going to retreat I think they're also trying to check me Oz and not take the first hit, but we can always just psychic recharge onto our Dawn Wings, get a nice easy knockout on Kangaskhan, and then if my opponent does want to knock us out from there, then we can have a back and forth knockout with our own Ultra Necrozma. We do finally get our third Malamar into play, we was just one card away from that chorus, and let's see. If we hit into this, then my opponent is going to knock us out with a Zacian. And then from there, we wouldn't be able to hit them, but they don't have a Zacian set up yet. And they are working towards this Sylvale. The Sylvale only does 120 damage, so we wouldn't get knocked out that way. And I think we will just want to get a knockout here. Keeping pressure on my opponent and Getting knockouts while they're not able to find energy is going to be the key for sure. So we're going to psychic recharge energy onto our Dawn Wings once again. As well as so we might as well attach some extra energy onto our Ultra Necrozma. Since there's not really any reason not to. We'll use Stellar Wish. See if we get anything good. We get a Boss's Orders. That's interesting. That changes things up a little bit. As that will allow us to get a knockout here on that Zacian that's been built up. So we can attach a float stone, use invasion, and we go into the active spot, but we're then able to retreat back into the Ultra Necrozma. And we might as well be a little bit fancy on my opponent and attach that extra psychic energy, use boss's orders to bring up that Zacian, and then hit them with the Photon Geyser, dealing a total of 420 damage for the knockout discarding a whole bunch of psychic energy but it's well worth it and my opponent concedes falling too far behind of course. And just showing off how powerful that deck is and Deltron across my card itself as well. 
Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.